does Professor Reed believe class dynamics applies to Native Americans or was the intent of cultural eradication bent on militaristic white supremacy, being they weren't intended to participate in labor? Native Americans were the victims like of empire building. And uh, empire building is fundamentally a class project, right? And people kind of lose sight of the fact that, uh, well, a friend of mine just said this morning that, that, that um, you know, white supremacy, I think a way to look at the relationship between white supremacy and capitalism is that white supremacy has, has been at different points the scaffolding that 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 helps to solidify the building or helps to hold up the building while it's being constructed, right? Um, and once the building is solid and sturdy, you don't need the scaffolding anymore, right? And like this came up in discussion of how how much public historical commemoration has changed in Charleston, South Carolina, since I first started going down there uh, to visit like in the late 70s. I mean, I remember the first first time I ever went to Charleston, the um, placard on the house where John Calhoun wrote the nullification ordinance was bubbly, right? I mean, this is where he wrote it. Uh, you know, next time I'm down there, like in the late 80s or no, probably early 90s, um, you know, the language is moderated a little bit. And by the time we started working down down there at the end of the 90s, it was all 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 multiculti. And and the city um, about a year ago uh, made a big to do of erecting an historical marker on the battery to Robert Charles, the slave um, ship's pilot who stole um, a ship and and sailed like 40 some slaves to to, uh, to freedom behind um, Union lines. And that never would have been thinkable in the late 1970s or 1980s. And the crescendo of this, like in Charleston was a few weeks ago, month month or two ago, whatever, uh, pandemic time, just all- all, yeah, no, it's all yeah. flattened, yeah. Yeah, but they took, uh, there's this massive, pedestal or a big sculpture of John C. Calhoun on a massive pedestal uh, in the heart of downtown. It was quite like like the Robert E. Lee of a statue here. And the city took it down. And the city took it down without capital. There was no beef or anything. That would have been absolutely unthinkable in 1990. Uh, and class relations haven't changed. And, and that means from a superficial glance, right, like um, the the um, apportionment of goods and bads in 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 the local polity along race lines at first glance doesn't look look like it's changed that much right i mean most of the conspicuously poor people are black uh, most of the conspicuously rich people are white um, but they have changed right uh, i mean the class class dynamics because you know what turns out you don't really need white supremacy for the ruling class to do what it wants to do, right? It was a useful thing. Like, uh, I mean, just keep keeping at Charleston for 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 a minute. Like in eighteen late eighteen forties and eighteen fifties, uh, there's a great book on this uh, by uh, Johnson and Rourke, which I know sounds like a cooking school, but it's called uh, Black Masters. It's a study of several generations of a black slave owning family in South Carolina. And they detail, and these guys aren't um, you know, ideologues. I mean, they're good historians, but but they show how, um, you know, like into the 1840s, there was a significant free population, free black population in Charleston who were mainly craftsmen. And there was uh, a substantial population of skilled slave workers. And and on more of West of West Indian model, um, the, the owners had worked out arrangements with the, uh, the skilled slaves that they could sell off uh, some of their labor to uh, others in, in exchange for the master getting a cut of the proceeds, right? By the end of the 1840s, two things happened. Uh, one was that the white immigrant population grew. And the other, the more consequential one, uh, uh, because until that point, in the planter class showed a decided preference for free black artisan labor, uh, which tended to be a higher skilled, and also for um, slave craftsmen, 
than for um, busted white white workers, basically, right? Who were just considered, I don't know, trash. But starting uh, I mean, over the 1850s, as it became clearer to the local um, planter class that secession was likely to become an issue, right? Um, their their response to free free white workers began to shift, and they began like to emphasize their shared whiteness with these white white workers, and began and it showed up in the in in labor re regulation, so that the pendulum swung toward um, reducing the competition from free black and skilled slave slave workers, right? But it's driven by a political imperative. It's not driven, and yeah, like I'm sure, you know, all these guys are committed to white supremacy as an ideology and believe it because because one of the things that ideologies, my dad always pointed out, is is like a mechanism that harmonizes the principles that you like to think you believe in with what advances your material interests. Um, but white supremacy was functional, right, for for material objectives. Fast forward to the end of the 19th century and the defeat of the populist movement, you see the same thing with even more aggressively, right, to an extent that white supremacy was in some ways um, imposed on white workers and 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 farmers uh, it, as almost as much as it what was on blacks, but in different ways with different consequences, obviously. So going back to like the Native American question, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, white supremacy emerges out of the conquest, right? But the point of the conquest is is um, expansion of capitalism, right? So I think you asked what time it is. I told you how to make a watch, but <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. <laughs>